The Bill is the longest running police drama in British television history. Since the pilot, the fate of the men and women at Sun Hill has kept viewers gripped for 25 years. In the constant battle to keep law and order, the Bills created iconic and memorable characters. Made me a household name. All right, girl. I actually owe the Bill a great debt. Mm, you played a mean game. It's been a launch pad for actors, with some surprising sightings along the way. I read it and it was a challenge, so why not? Reality. I probably was the only actor in the United Kingdom that hadn't been in the bill. Mr. Roach. At the time, I thought, you know, I was a new garbo. You could at least make it the price of a drink. Quite frankly, you'll know one if you haven't been in the bill. If an actor hasn't been in the bill, he begins to doubt that he'll ever work again. It's kind of like a rite of passage for an actor in some ways. What they get are really good parts. Action! With a regular cast of 31 and hundreds of guest roles, the bill is responsible for launching many a fine career. Yep, many stars have a secret bill past. <laughs> the bill seems to find the great actors before they're famous. Remember me? I was only trying to feed my kids. In 1986, Michelle Collins wasn't a household name. Instead, she was a 23-year-old jobbing actress at the start of her career, when she landed one of her first major roles. You think I'm right in the shit, don't you? I'm not a fag end. So bloody what? I've got my kids. No one takes them away. She was a bit of a sad, sort of downtrodden sort of character from what I remember, which, um... But those characters are always great to play. I've never been in trouble before, and now everyone's talking about what's happened. I can do without the police. Just leave me alone, will you? Get off my back! There was nothing glamorous about her whatsoever. Um, sort of ponytail, palm tree, you know, <laughs> as we used to wear in the 80s. Why don't you go and track down my husband? You want to do something useful? Get my back money! Go on, why don't you? I mean, like it is now, it was very well respected. And um, so to get a really good, gritty part in the bill was, was actually quite a, a, a coup. Yeah. To check. Yeah. Here. Good grief. About a year later, I got I'm a BBC sorry. drama, which then led to Julia Smith seeing me in EastEnders. So I'm sure, you know, it definitely um, helped um, my career, definitely. That's her. This actress started even younger, at the age of 10, with just a small role on the bill. Mine. Yeah. She will go on to become one of the leading actresses of her generation. Kira Knightley. Quite old. It wasn't me. I didn't do nothing to him. It's all right. We're not blaming you, Jane. I didn't touch him. Her fellow Atonement co-star, James McAvoy, also got a big break on the bill when he was still a teenager. Look, I don't want to get involved, OK? Involved in what? With the police. Look, Rob's in hospital. We're trying to contact his next of kin. And well, I don't know who they are. So where did it all begin? In 1983, a time when British television was still limited to four channels, an experimental drama about life on the beat hit the airwaves with the immortal first words. OK, Carver, let's do it. Do it, they did. The success of the pilot called Wooden Top led to the series. Within a few years, it looked set to run and run. I do remember saying to my mates at the time, they have now created their own world and this could last forever. Well, welcome to Sun Hill. For 25 years, the centre of the Bill universe has been Sun Hill Police Station in the fictional East London district of Canley. Of course, Canley doesn't exist, neither does the area around it. But what does exist is a very convincing set. Today, they're shooting episode 2,256. So you walk down a corridor and it's the, the real world. So there's dressing rooms and makeup and costume. And then you walk through a door and you're in the police station. 
And then, of course, you want to go to the toilet. You don't know if that's a real toilet or an acting toilet. And cut, one more. The Bill isn't a fashionable show. You know, it's, it's not the show that grabs all the headlines. Um, but we have, uh, I think what makes it unique is we have the best uh, guest artists. For those guest artists, the bill is a proving ground. You go onto the set of the bill, you're going to learn a lot more in a day than you will most places in months. Do you remember me? I was a copper's narc. Hello. Mr Roach. It was 1988 when Roxanne joined the cast of The Bill for three episodes. Oh, thanks a lot. A girl's got to live, you know. Played by an absolute beginner, then known as Paul Savage. Usual terms of trust. Never trust a policeman, remember? Yeah, but you're special. It was my first telly job, to tell you the truth. And I was working in the Vauxhall Tavern, and I, um, one of the casting directors, I think it was Angela Grosvenor, it was so long ago, she came down and she said, oh, would you fancy being in the bill? We're not talking about a warehouse, you know. Not if you do mean the barmaid. You do, don't you? I knew everybody's lines. You know, on the first day, I was so enthusiastic. Oh, it's not so much a business. Yeah, more of a cottage industry. I've heard it before. We were discussing the relationship and we said, what should, how should we play it? And we thought, we'd play it like Gladys George and Jimmy Cagney from the Roaring Twenties. So I spoke out the corner of my mouth. And he was always angst in his Mac. What happened to you? I gave out the prizes at the Brownies Road Safety Competition. I warned you about that club. Now, I didn't want Roxanne to be a big glamorous drag queen, as the original idea was. They wanted quite a glamorous drag act, and I said no, because, you know, <clears throat> the places where she's lurking uh, and the way she deals with road, she'd be one of the, she'd be a transvestite, but not a glamorous one. So I used to not shave and put the makeup on over it and I'd look at myself in the mirror and think, oh, my God, talk about rough. They had a lot of trust in me, and I was really grateful for that. Because remember, one of the episodes is quite a hefty one. I had a lot of dialogue to learn. I haven't seen them since. They're probably bloody shocking. But at the time, I thought, you know, I was a new Garbo. <laughs> that was marvellous. Now, you tell me something. People there suspect me. Look, I guarantee... 24-hour protection? Uh, I need that, don't I? They don't mess around, you know. I need this one, Roxanne. I just got such happy memories of it. I'd like to go back. I'd like to be a villain. I'd like to be a really twisted serial killer. <laughs> a lot about me, doesn't it? There's your drink. Mm. That does make a change. What do you want? When did you last Actors see coming into the bill get to play substantial, well-written parts. This one would forge his career out of playing tough guys. But in 1995, Ray Winston was a relative unknown. They charge me. Like all great actors, right? Ray Winston. It was just, it was, he, he was just 150 percent all the time. You know what I mean? We're bringing her in. You. <laughs> in only his second role on telly, this young hoodlum is none other than Sean Bean. No, keep quiet. The bill. What? Oh, where? Oh, Police officer. Oh, no. oh. Oi, Bob, you'll have to give me the name of your tailor. I'll go around and kick his windows in. Yeah, I know where to go if I need a fitting, Tommy. Just dial 999. Yeah, you'll get yours, chummy. Over its 25-year history, The Bill, through its cast, has created unforgettable characters. Characters who have become famous in their own right. Remember me? I'm the man you love to hate. I was the one that got away. Firm but fair. I was the good cop. You all right, mate? Who could forget Sergeant Bob Cryer, DCI Frank Burnside, and DS Don Beach? Three characters and actors who have been immortalised by the bill. I did something like 1,200 episodes. Let's assume that only 600 of those episodes I was playing the leading storyteller. To be given 600 lead roles in your career of, with a character of that calibre, who's to complain? Tommy Burnside. 
don't take a jump, Sergeant. Dear Tommy Burnside, as he was then. And then they found out there was some poor man who has worked in the Met who was called Tommy Burnside, whose career was probably ruined by me. But they had to change his name. And so they changed it to Frank, eventually. All right, Gav. It was quite a funny character as well. He had a lot of funny lines. Glad to see that nose job was a success, Bobby. Great um, lines like, by the time I get a whisper into the scrubs, he'll admit to have eaten sugar, you know, and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's a bloody well to come and see me, shouldn't you? Hello, Claire. <laughs> get out of me! Get out of me! Get out of me! Stop it! The character raised my profile within the uh, acting fraternity. I mean, very, very high. Turn around! Really, I suppose I got um, EastEnders after that. So, for me, uh, it was a rewarding thing. Oh, not you as well. Have you been stitching me up? No. And not yet. There was a bloke... ..called Chris. Fellow EastEnder Joe Absalom also cut his acting teeth on the bill. As a teenager, he appeared three yeah. times. Is Mr Harper around? In the office. I don't know if it was the first time I thought I wanted this is what I want to do, but it was definitely one of these moments where you think, okay, this is quite a good setup. <laughs> one of the secrets of the Bill's success is that it's always remained as true to real life as possible. Here we go. The uniforms and the vehicles match that of the Metropolitan Police, the only drama allowed to do so. We're at speed. Action. Oh, Terry, Max, I've heard from the hospital. Yeah, how's the Well, the knife has severed a tendon, but he'll live. What about Tyrell? Oh, D.I. Manson's got him in the cell. Right, thank you, Mum. Well, they send you on, like, a, a police day, so you get to go out, you get to go out with a real policeman, and you get to go on patrol with them and everything, and get to be in the squad car and get to do the blue flashing lights. On air twice weekly means filming six days a week, especially tough for the new girl. I spent the past few months being a, a non-working actor, you know, not getting out of bed before 10 in the morning. And now it's like, you know, getting up at 5, getting into work, 12-hour, 13-hour days. Um, but I've been prepared for that. They're all very much like, you've got to work really hard. I'm like, OK. Well, how was your first day? A bit slow, to be honest, Mum. You need to keep an eye on her, Smithy. Yeah. I'm already on it, Mum. She might be a bit rough around the edges, but seeing as she's here, we might as well keep her. OK, turn them off. The bill doesn't just launch careers, it transforms them. They seem to manage to get people into the bill that you think, oh, wow, I haven't seen them on TV for a long time, or to persuade them to do something they wouldn't ordinarily do. Remember me? You don't get it, do you? She's a mad, vindictive bitch. I tried to hide my crime. You got it wrong. In 2007, the new kid in town was a well-known man about town. Darren Day was already established in musical theatre, but until his guest role on the bill, he wasn't known as a serious actor. What's taking you so long? DC Masters, DS Turner. Some thug has smashed up all my stuff. When did this happen? While I was out this morning. I'd never done a prime time, very well established kind of, you know, jobby. And so um, I was really, really flattered to be offered it. What's Maria been saying? Mr. Slade. It's Slade. One word, like Bono. Yeah, that was definitely the best line, um, you know, that I had. Uh, it, was, it was probably one of the best lines I've ever had in anything, really. It was a fantastic line. Yeah, this is a site hosted by Jeff Slade. Now, he's the photographer who took Maria's portfolio shots. And this is the victim herself. In the interrogation room, it was difficult to say that website name without having a little bit of a twinkle in the eye. I arrived at Maria's about 6 a.m. I was taking some shots from my website. That's hussyforyou.com. Yeah. I don't know if maybe you know the casting people think you're going to burst into song every every couple of scenes, but it's a difficult one. But what the bill did for me was it made it made people sit up and take notice. Actually, she tried to whip me. I'm so sorry. Tell that to Maria's dad. I'm seeing some casting people now that I truly believe wouldn't have let me in the door. I wouldn't have been interested in me coming in the door pre the bill being screened. So, thank you very much. Yes? DC Perkins, DS to Costa, Sunny, what's the ID? 
is uh, uh, becoming. The Bill's great skill is to cast against type. With an acting pedigree from Shakespeare to the lovable Manuel in 40 Towers, Andrew Sachs didn't hesitate to take on a highly disreputable character in the Bill. Bit of a come down for you, innit? Even from a hostel in Stratford. I manage. The character I played was um, a sex offender. He was on the list. He'd done his, his, his prison sentence some years ago. And he'd uh, presumably interfered with the child. And he's now a suspect in another case which has, in fact, nothing to do with him. Whatever it is you think I did... We're not thinking anything. We simply want to figure out where you were and what you were doing this afternoon. Well, it's got to be another child, isn't it? Should I play this? Why not? Is it, is it good? Is it good? Is it real? And I thought it was. No phoniness about it. I thought, well, yeah, why not? I haven't spoken to, touched, looked at another child since the day I went into prison. Not even the photographs of my own grandchildren. If I see a child crossing the street, I, I turn away. I swear to you, that is the truth. The challenge was doing it quickly, because they work so kind of smoothly, they're so used to it. Suddenly a new boy comes in, and it's like being first day in school, you know, oh, I'm sure I'll get it wrong, I don't know, they'll sack me, they'll get somebody else, you know, and do it. Thanks for your help, Mr. Layton. I didn't abduct anyone, you know. You see the, the technical qualities that go into making one of these things and keep the standard up over hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of episodes is a bit of a masterpiece, really. I tend to underestimate those things. On the bill, you never know what to expect. Remember me? Stuff happens inside all the time. I was imprisoned for a dreadful crime. She made us laugh in Birds of a Feather. On the bill, Pauline Quirk was cast as a woman who could unsettle many. Leslie. I kind of had her down as an angry lesbian child killer, really. Kind of summed her up. I thought that when I got out, we could you know, spend time together. Talk. About what? Us. I probably was the only actor in the United Kingdom that hadn't been in the bill when it was starting to worry me a little bit. In fact, some of the actors I know have been in it more than once. In fact, there has been rumours that some dead actors have actually been brought back to life and have been appearing in the bill. Shall I give us her details? Pauline got a chance and she didn't regret it. There's no frills uh, uh, working on the bill. Um, you know, you, you get yourself there, you get yourself home, and uh, they tell you up front, you know, that there are dressing rooms, but you will be sharing them with another 208 actors. And, but that's all right, because, you know what, everyone's exactly the same. Um, and, of course, most actors dream, because that's all we ever think about, is food, and the canteen there is free. <laughs> so, you know, what I mean? the actors don't care if they get paid or not. They've got free food on tap. I know you've got feelings for me. Trust me, I haven't. It was my birthday while I was filming as well, and they got me a beautiful bouquet of flowers, which I thought was very nice, bearing in mind I was just passing through. Um, so, you yeah, know, very happy memories. Lovely canteen. Have I mentioned that? Yeah, I did. Patricia Gaunt, DS Nixon and Inspector Gold, Sun Hill. On the bill, the women are as tough as the men. It's always offered great roles for female actors. You hard-faced bitch. That's me. There's been a long line of very, very strong female characters, and I don't think we see enough of that on telly now, so um, I feel very lucky. Taking on the part of Sam Nixon was more than a challenge to Lisa Maxwell. Oh, more lies! I did it for you! You did it to protect yourself because you let a murderer get into your knickers. When I said yes to the job, I didn't know whether I could do it because I'd only had, you know, one sort of grown-up acting job. I'd done lots of comedy, but no, no drama. And well before her starring role as Denise in EastEnders, Diane Parrish came to prominence as DC Eva Sharp. One minute, I had Brad on the ground, cuffed him, and the next minute he was unconscious and now he's dead. With any job, it has to be the right job. But it was absolutely the right job. It was absolutely something that I wanted to do and, and relished doing. And I'm so glad that I got the chance to do it. 
and she didn't have to wear the uniform. At least it's moved on from the 80s skirts and handbags. You see, members of CID, especially the guys, were always better dressed to catch villains. If we were out on a, on a raid, we used to get into our jeans and it was always like, who's got the best bomber jacket? <laughs> the real fashion parade then. Well, I think I might wear this one today. <laughs> The uniform is certainly not catwalk material, but any of the boys and girls in blue will say it's definitely functional. We get all of our stuff from the same stockists that the Met do. We're very lucky they let us use all of their equipment. Um, some of the police actually complain that we get their stuff quicker than they do. It doesn't feel like a costume. I thought I'd joined up. <laughs> Because the uniform's real, we have to be quite careful, because obviously we don't want to be seen to be impersonating a police officer, because we'd be in big trouble. So we always have to cover up, and we can't, you know, take any of it home or anything like that. We have an ASP. This is the new style truncheon. Um, it's a telescopic, expandable truncheon, but they take the middle out, because we are all children, and we do tend to flick them out, and when we do that, we usually hurt each other. But while it's great fun for the guys, the verdict's still out with the ladies. Yes. It's good that we wear trousers, but they're, like, up here. And I have to, I have to undo them at lunchtime because I can't breathe and the shirt's really tight and I can't breathe. After you've worn it a while and you've seen yourself on the screen, you realise that you can look like a piano's landed on your head because it makes you look really short <laughs> and wide. Then we have pepper spray. That is, uh, used to be full of water, but, again, being the child that I am, I used to spray a lot of people, usually around the crutch area, make it look like they've had a little accident. But what's a well-equipped hero without a good villain? Over the years, the Bills offered some of the greatest villain roles going. Remember me? I loved my father and he loved me. Remember me? I'm more worried about turning myself in and I will kill him. The bill has always changed with the times, and over 25 years, times have changed. Emma Bunton of Spice Girl fame is no longer an uncredited extra. The bottle of whiskey in the filing cabinet is no longer there. Cheers. And there's no chance of a cheeky smoke in the office either. Most of the early cast have altered too. Just two remain as much-loved heroes. PC Tony Stamp joined as an extra first, then as a regular character from 1987. My thrill of coming into the building has never left me. Uh, I've never woken up thinking, oh, God. I thought that quite a lot once I was here. <laughs> but certainly the initial of waking up in the morning and coming to work is thrilling. Where are you going? Get a butty. Do you want one? No, thanks. Because obviously I'm much older than I was when I started and I had black hair. Ha, ha. A senior policeman asked me once, had anything remained constant in the bill? And when I thought about it, I said, yes, something has. The villains are still 18. <laughs> but now it really ruddy well hurts to catch them. <laughs> uh, jump back up the quiet, 21 Mayfield Road! It's Meadows here. Thought we had a meeting for Another veteran of Sun Hill, DCI Jack Meadows, he's part of Top Brass. It's his job to keep officers in line, something he's done for well over a decade. We shouldn't have left him there. A young girl, Shanty Das, was shot at 6.40 this morning. People love crime stories. People love it. They love to turn up, turn on television and see a baddie and a, and a copper and see a bit of violence, maybe. And... Dad, I told you you won't find anything! You shit out and shut up! I always thought the bill would uh, would go on and on, but but as for myself, I mean, it's n never occurred to me that I'd be here for 16 years. You know, it's just uh, it's always been one year at a time. You know, you name it, I want it. Right, get out there, find out who did it. Usually, it's the guest artist who did it. With at least five in each episode, the bills always remain fresh and lively, given its inspired casting. Naz Darover. Before finding fame in Little Britain, David Williams did it as an activist in 2002. Your own sister thinks she did it. 
How is she now? I haven't spoken to her in over a year. Larry Moore. Coming. Rock legend Roger Daltrey, famous also for films such as McVicar and Tommy, definitely didn't do it. You don't believe me. No, I'm asking you what happened. My daughter found it on the mat. I called straight away. Straight away. I'll tell you what, Larry Moore was a council estate oh, drug dealer. Been released and was on the straight and narrow, and then gets accused of, of dealing again. Look, there's only two ways. You either drown or you fight. And I ain't drowning no more. Just... Just take it away. I read it and it was a challenge, so why not? I, it's, ne it's never been important to me whether it's a feature film, whether it's a play, whether it's a musical on stage, or whatever. It's w whether you can do something with it and whether it challenges you and whether it pushes you forward. Uh, and that's always been my interest in doing anything. At least I know what I am! A recovering addict! You're gonna let me do that? Recover? Go and hide behind your curtains, you tiny-minded, constipated old trap! I suppose it's a, probably the the best time you could possibly have on a council estate in Croydon. Do you know what she's been and gone and done, the nosy do-gooder? No, I don't. But you can't stand in the street and shout about it. You're going to move on. Parents against drugs! Well, that's me, you fat cow! No, no, all right, all right, no, that's enough! There are few Hollywood happy endings on the bill, and in Larry's case, he was pushed towards a tragic end. You made it, then? Play that where the guy kills his daughter and then commits suicide and not, you know, have it with any kind of understanding of what was going on in his head to get it out there it was a difficult challenge. <laughs> Reality. OK, I'll just be outside, yeah? I think we achieved it. I was quite pleased when I saw it anyway. I very rarely watch myself, but because it was the bill, I had to, because, you know, that's the, that's the right of passage for most English actors, isn't it? The bill is a show with a point of view. You only see the action, the crime itself, from the perspective of the police, the good guys. By filming mainly handheld on a single camera, much of the time on the streets of London, the bill manages to convey a gritty realism. We have to shoot quickly. You have to go on set knowing your lines and um, having read the script and get a good idea as to what you want to do with it. Today, it's not a Croydon council estate, but a park in south-west London. With the usual attention to detail, the name has been changed to Sherland Park, Canley. Right, let's rehearse. As DC Mickey Webb trails a suspected bomber. We sit at Sierra Oscar Unis, icy one male, black tracksuit bottoms and a maroon hoodie. Our workload can be quite gruelling. And action, Joe. We have a minimum of four crews on the go simultaneously. Anybody sees him, I want them to notify me on this location. And cut. Good, can I just pick up the final run in, actually, Chris? It can be up to six days a week. And if you're very heavy in several scripts, because we do shoot several scripts at a time, that could be up to 12 hours a day. Of course. Good. Which means your social life's kind of up the spout a bit. Um, but then when you get to my age, you can't have a drink and go to work anyway, because you pick your face up off the pillow in the morning and stick it back on. Because the makeup girls are brilliant here, but <laughs> they ain't that good. Police! And it's a demanding task for the guest actors especially when they've never played a serious, dramatic role. Like comic entertainer and game show host, Les Dennis. I'll take the cellar. Remember me? No, no, I'll stay back, Mr. Walker. I bet you thought I did it. It's not my fault, it's not my fault. Down. Stop it! On the surface, Tom Walker seemed like a really nice guy, but underneath... There was another side to him, and that's what appealed to me about playing him. I love... 
I loved my father and he loved me. Yes, things could get stormy between us, but we were always very close. The most difficult thing about it was working with Lisa Maxwell, because Lisa and I worked together um, 10, 15 years ago in sketch comedy. I used to have a show, The Les Dennis Laughter Show, and Lisa was my leading lady in that. His character, um, his dad dies or is murdered, uh, and he's found in the freezer, and we all think that Les has done it. <laughs> I do not really know. And uh, that's what I was thinking of, I think of nothing to Les. I can imagine saying, you know, where's your dad? I do not really know. It was difficult because we were doing these very straight, serious things, and we were, I was thinking, there's no gag at the end of this. Did you put your father's body in the freezer, Mr Walker? No! I didn't know anything about the will until you told me! <laughs> he, uh, came up with the line of the, of the shoot, which was, um, where's your dad? <laughs> Dad's gone to Iceland. Mm -hmm. So scenes of crime didn't find anything? No, just some fish fingerprints on the lid. <laughs> oh, stop it. When it got to the denouement, the, the end scene, I thought, great, this is something that I can really, really play with and, and, and enjoy. What are you doing? Go away. Please. Just leave. No, 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 no. Stop it. Please. It's pointless. To bring um, some kind of darkness to a character was, was a really uh, a challenge for me um, and, uh, and, and interesting. And it was, uh, the feedback I got from people was, at first we thought it's Les Dennis, but then we thought we got, we got into the character and we believed it. And that, that's the kind of kick I get out of playing somebody that you don't expect me to play. Put the lighter down, please, Tom. He was a horrible man, you know. There was one time when my mum was away for a weekend, Dad actually brought a prostitute here. There aren't many shows on telly where they take a chance on people like that and give them the opportunity to really showcase what they're capable of. It's a shame that Les blew it on the first day by giggling, but what can you do? Some people just never grow up, do they? Remember me? How many times have I got to tell you to keep your mouth shut? Me and my boys used to run half of London. She was the ideal wife in all creatures, great and small. What do you think you're doing? The ideal mum in Yoxo ads. On the bill, for the only time in her career, Linda Bellingham was cast as an arch villainess. Irene Radford is about as far removed from me and Oxo as you can possibly imagine. I'm more worried about turning myself in and I will kill you. I don't believe that. Try me. She obviously just got kicks out of breaking the law, really. I'm going to take my son now, and you're going to let me. We stay where you are. Behave yourself. You'll be fine. <coughs> just do as I say. David, get up. Come on, this is all for you. Get up! She was a great challenge to me, because I... I and I could only work it back to... In a, in a strange way, a mother's love for her sons. But she was evil beyond belief. It's not Irene. He's ill. He's ill. Christ. It's David. David. It's sad. I'm going to have to leave you, son. So, looks like it's just you and me now. I had lots of stuff with Roberta, you know, and Gina Gold. And, um, and it was quite subtle stuff because we were quite similar women in fact you know it was the good and side bad of the penny do she says phil do she says stay there don't you let me down again phil don't you let me down this time the car. and then we have this fantastic thing where we, we you know we get in the car and we have a chase and it's every it's my dream actually because the men always get to do it don't they Drive! And so to do it, it was lovely and to hold her as she's driving and drive and we're going through this forest at speed and over bumps and things. It was gorgeous. I'm going to leave you the car keys, that way you can get yourself back home. I'll be halfway across English Channel by then. I was very upset that I died. I just feel they should... my little leg should have dangled from that plane. Hello, Irene. Little message from my dad. <laughs> Stay back! Stop. 
It was brilliant. It was, you know, six months of my life. I absolutely adored it. And I got wonderful response from, from the general public. You know, I still got people coming up to me. Um, a man, even last night, I was doing a, a, um, a charity thing for uh, Princess Anne's, Princess Royal's Trust for Carers, and a very smart man next to me said, I'm so thrilled, Dimitro. When I go to the theatre, I never bother to see where the act has been before or what theatre. I only look in the programme notes to see if they've been in the bill, and you have. And I was thrilled. It's a thrilling drama, and on the bill we've seen it all. Murder, suicide, explosions, terrorism, and fantastic chase scenes. All shot on a tight schedule, which demands the best of any actor. You've got to be kind of fit, because if someone says to you, right, OK, we're shooting this, right, and you start off there, you jump out of the car, we need you to run across there, we need to jump over the wall, and then grab him and put him, pin him to the ground. You know, I can't do that. Take ten. <laughs> you might not be able to do it again. I know it sounds a bit pathetic, but, you know, so I'll do all my own stunts, but if you fall down once, it's fine. After about the ninth time, it begins to pull. There was one scene where I know that um, I was accused of shoplifting and I had to run down, well, it was a bit of a waddle, to be honest with you, but I had to waddle down a road and, and I remember Todd Carty had to grab hold of me. It was very rough. And back on location, it's take five. Sally and I are tracking down what we think is the Canley bomber and we drive down this road here and see him in here and drive in and jump out and rugby tackle him and be very action-packed. At speed and action! I've definitely tried to improve my fitness since joining this job because we're just on the go all the time, loads of chasing scenes, lots of fight scenes and wrestling and stuff, so I've had to try and toughen up a little bit. Of course, some of the best crime fighters were also the worst villains, and there were few cards as wild as DS Don Beach, whose idea of policing was his own business. He bent the rules to suit himself. He was a good copper. Um, if he couldn't get the result that he thought was necessary, he'd get it by another means. Come to make you a proposition. Not interested. <laughs> Perhaps one of the most memorable scenes was when uh, Cryer comes bursting in to a flat. What do you think you're doing? You can't just barge in here. We're investigating the abduction of a six-month-old baby. In there, Debbie. Okay. And this bare backside gets out of bed and it's Beach and he's in bed with a prostitute. Oh. Beach's bare-faced cheek was matched by another rogue detective, DCI Frank Burnside. He managed to reinvent the rules of confession. Do you want to go to the toilet? Hey? Of course you do. Come on. Jim? It seems to be the only thing that Burnside's remembered for was shoving this poor bloke's head. And I always felt sorry for that actor. <laughs> Who was it? Please, I can't! There he is, with his head down this toilet again. You know, and he's become famous for that. But there was one copper who topped the lot. Remember me? I was Sunhill's worst nightmare. Calm down! <laughs> Made famous as Tucker Jenkins on Grange Hill and as EastEnders Mark Fowler. On the bill, Todd Carty became infamous. Yard, then. No, you're, you're loving all this. I, you know how it all ends. I don't understand! I want you to suffer like I've suffered. PC Gabriel Kent had some of the darkest, most sensational storylines ever seen on the bill. He raped, he pillaged, he murdered, he shot, um, he beat up people, and um, he happened to be a copper at the same time, so that's quite a nice combination, really. Or a strange combination, should I say. I don't have to answer to you. No, you don't. Which is why I'm asking you to keep your big mouth shut. 
playing the baddie is always the most fun. I think any actor worth his salt will always say, if you can wake up in the morning and uh, go to work and be bad, it's, it's great. You know, I mean, I love animals, but I, I got all my frustrations out at work. I never went home and kicked the proverbial cat when I got home through my, my, my front door. Of course, it couldn't last. He had to have his comeuppance. It's Gabriel. He's gone berserk. Gabriel? He tied up Sheila Murphy and tried to kill her. He um, kidnapped June. Every time I find happiness, you take it away no. from me, don't you? You poisoned Sheila against me, didn't no, you? No, no. He basically blamed her for everything, all the misfortunes in his life. You can't control events. Life just happens. So everyone else may be, but I don't have a life. You rob me of it. <laughs> Smithy turns up, Mr. Hero. Um, we have a fight. Eventually, I overpower him and knock him out. Stay real long! That what you got, soldier boy? I stand on the edge of the 60 story building, and Gabriel's thinking, Do I want to go to the clink for life? Or shall I be a fatalist? He turned to June and he said, See what you've done to me. Looked down, took in what was happening, and jumped to his death. Oh! Happy story, isn't it? <laughs> <gasps> what did the bill do for me? It gave me a chance to play something completely different, to lose a bit of weight running around in those hot suits. It took my career in a completely different direction, so... Good on you, Bill, and thanks for the memories. But what's a good villain without a hero? The Bills had a great roll call of both. The greatest hero of the Bill for me would be uh, DCI Jack Meadows. He's got CID like that. I have a soft spot for Smithy, I think. He's just um, a good uniform cop who goes out there and does the job. I think Phil Hunter, for me, was my favourite character, just because he did a bit of everything. Pissy Tony Stamp. You want to give him a hug, don't you? Carver, for putting up with Burnside all those years, giving him a hard time. I mean, the character did everything, from being that little fresh-faced boy in the wooden tops. When he was doing the, the drunk stuff, I thought that was exemplary. Trudy, I think. Got to vote for the girls, haven't you? Old man's totty. <laughs> I can't remember her name, but she was rather nice. Billy Murray was a pretty bad boy, wasn't he? I thought he was quite a good villain. Burnside. I mean, there was an actor who brought a real dangerous edge to the character. He was the old-style alpha male. You could just imagine him beating up villains when people weren't looking. I'd have to vote for, for Beach as the villain, I suppose, because he was. See, I could, I could vote for me, but I won't. Ultimately, it's the characters, good and bad, that have made The Bill a huge success. And across a quarter of a century, The Bill has been a prime vehicle for British talent, taking many an actor's career in new directions. But you're special. It's a great show, The Bill. What do you think? Look how long it's been on. Proof's in the pudding. Looking back on my career, the bill stands out as one of the happiest times of my life. I actually owe the bill a great debt. Made me a household name. Um, put my picture on the front cover of the TV Times, you know. Receive. He'll always be a bit of me, Frank. But I did love him. <laughs> it's sort of part of our heritage now. I think the bill and I think it's great now that a lot of up-and-coming actors have those things to sort of go into that is still very very well respected it's dependable drama you know you can tune in turn on watch it and you're and you're gonna get a good bit of television and I think that's what everyone wants isn't it you never know who's gonna show up on the bill uh, we're going to put her in the observation for the moment. Alex we're Kingston really Hugh Laurie Sergeant Beach Kathy Burke and John Hanna. Uh, must be a mistake. I hope for your sake it is. All had their chance in the Bill spotlight. Please, I can't wait much longer. You see, quite possibly, everyone has been in the Bill. Including this musician turned actor. I should know. It was me. 
or to confess to a murder. Well, Holly and Fern are back with more guests for Celebrity Juice on ITV2 next and its classic horror thriller, The Devil Rides Out, on ITV4 next. Tomorrow night's here at tonight's special following the Duchess of York and her daughters on a secret mission at nine. <laughs>